It's the Brian and Kendra Show with Brian Cook and Kendra Cox of Keller Williams Realty Elite. I am Kendra Cox. I'm Brian Cook. Between the two of us, we have over 30 years of experience. Sharing real estate tips and advice right here on Classic Hits 107.3. All right, so so today we are going to talk about your mortgage application. Um, But real quick, so just just a quick refresher of steps whenever you're going to purchase a home. Um, A lot of our buyers are first-time home buyers or they haven't bought a home in a long time. And so it's just good to kind of just run through real quick what is the most helpful thing to do whenever you're about to purchase a home. I got to talk to a brand-new home buyer this week, and, and it's intimidating to start shopping for your house. So first things first, um, obviously I want you to talk to us first, but we're not going to really go look at houses first. We just kind of want to get a feel for you, let you get a feel for us and and just share a little bit about what's going to happen and what buying a home looks like. Um, We want for you to get in touch with the lender and one of our sponsors is Bank 7, Connie and Melinda, and they are, man, they are just an excellent team, both very, very good at what they do. Um, So you would go and get pre-approved for your mortgage Um, it helps to talk to your lender about how much you want your payment to be. Because sometimes when we just look at the big number of the, of the house price, we get excited or we get terrified and <laughs> we shop inappropriately. Um, so it's good to go ahead and talk about how much your payment's going to be and shop based off of that payment. Most people are buying a house with a payment. Right. So um, after that, then we start shopping and we go under contract. We do inspections. We have appraisals, title work, all kinds of crazy stuff. It doesn't always go the way that we want, but we can tell you what the scenario should look like and then closing, and then funding, and then handing over the keys. So we're going to talk about the mortgage today, what it looks like. And how to be ready. So uh, I was scanning through our Realtor magazines. There's a bunch of good stuff in here for information for us, basically kind of preparing our buyers and sellers. But this one says, so this is why you start your mortgage and start looking to buy if you're looking to buy. But they're saying rates in spring are expected to be averaging 35 uh, percent based on their the National Association of Realtors projections. Right now, it's three percent um, is the average, <clears throat> which is way way low, and three and a half mm-hmm. is still cheap. It is. So I think we kind of all are like, oh man, three and a half percent, because some of us were able to refinance or to purchase our homes at two and a quarter, two point seven five. That was amazing, but we knew that wouldn't last. So three and a half percent is still. So on a two hundred thousand dollar loan, uh-huh. half a percent is ninety one dollars a month. Wow. So it's, I mean, it adds up that 91 mm-hmm. bucks is a month. Absolutely. Just a half a percent on 200,000. So if, so if you're looking to buy or sell um, or refinance, like some of you guys out there have these crazy five and 6% interest rate loans, um, you should be looking to refinance at least. Um, but if you're looking to, to buy, we need to get you pre-approved. The other thing is building. So building is kind of a mess. Uh, Lumber's still a little bit high with the hurricanes and all the fires. Lumber's not dropping as fast as we thought they would right. back to, to where it should be after the COVID craze. Um, <laughs> but it, so building. Wait, wait, you think the COVID craze is over? <clears throat> so the building <laughs> <clears throat> um, could continue. The rates of the building could be going up. So um, if it costs $300,000 to buy what cost last year 200000 just for numbers. Mm-hmm. Our old houses will eventually start appreciating to match that value. Mm-hmm. We're seeing that in Woodward a little bit. I mean, Oklahoma City, the big metro areas are seeing it like really bad. Right. But Woodward, we're starting to see it. So we've, we, it's weird. We have this threshold. Like we've seen four or five houses sell for over a hundred dollars a square foot that are 30, 40 years old. Right. And it's just like this. It's like we had to break that ceiling. And now that we did. There, you know, there was 102, 105. The last couple were sold for $115 a square foot. I mean, they were super nice and ready sure. to live in. Absolutely. But um, it's just one of them things that we got to see. I remember when the new house was hitting $100 a square foot, and I thought, and we were like, right what? Mind? I was thinking about that the other day, too. Yeah. And it, it's crazy. But the other thing that we're seeing um, changing a little trend in our market is our multiple offers. Last week I was like, oh, we never have multiple offers. Okay, we've had three different situations with multiple offers in the last two weeks. Yeah, It's getting a little bit crazy. And I also, we kind of talked about how we handle multiple offer situations. I probably should have prefaced that. That's how we handle those with, um, whenever a seller counter offers back to all three, 
with a multiple offer form. Right. Um, so sometimes this week we had a couple of offers. Can, mm -hmm. can I share all this? Am I going to get fired? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't um, do it by myself. So well, I need you to <laughs> <laughs> a little job security until he replaces me. Um, it gets tricky sometimes because so we'd already been in negotiations, 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 um, but we were quite a ways apart still with what the seller's counteroffer and the buyer's counteroffers were looking like. Um, and then another agent, all of a sudden, I open my email and dang, there's another full price offer on this property. Full price offer on this property. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the seller's like, well, I don't want to mess with countering anymore. I just want to accept the full price. Like right. they felt like it was not worth their time um, because to time is an investment yeah. to do the multiple offer form. And so it occurred to me then I thought, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. We like the multiple offer forms because we want everyone to feel like they had the best option. But sometimes we've already wasted. Sometimes we've already wasted our options. Right. So anyway, it's kind of interesting because I, I, I didn't see it coming that we'd start having multiple offers so fast. Absolutely. But here they are. Yep. So. You're looking at something. What are I you just saw about? Adam White was here last week. <laughs> and so, oh, you're but, seeing that I sassed him? Yeah. So Adam White was the warranty guy. He came last week yeah. and he said, um, so he just Facebook commented and said, hey, you guys should have that warranty guy on there. He did a great job. <laughs> I said, yeah, he was all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So first things first, what do I need whenever I want to get a mortgage? What is the first thing that I need to do? Oh, man, you need pay steps. I think right. that's the first thing. So they can kind of calculate what your income is. Um, that's a biggie. Um, that way they know kind of how much money you're making, which leads to your debt to income ratio. Um, so you're gonna have to bring in your debt. So you need all your income forms and your debt forms, income forms, all the money that comes into you and all your debt forms, your credit cards, house payment, car payment, whatever you have to pay. Let's start with pay stubs. Okay. Okay. So the, the document that I had pulled up that was kind of helping a cheat sheet was like one pay stub. I'm, I'm going to tell you, you probably really need two. Um, and you may have to bring them again. So mm -hmm. depending on how long our contract goes, I think this is one of the most surprising things to buyers is is that if your contract goes on for too terribly long, you might have to update some of these documents that you've already submitted. So it's a good idea during your contract period to go ahead and start hanging on to new bank statements, to hang on to your new pay stubs, so that whenever, if we need those again, we, not really me, your lender, if they need that again, that you'll be prepared. So a couple of pay stubs, first things first. Um, you also need your W-2 tax forms. So um, last two years, usually, right? Two to yes. three years mm -hmm. of your um, tax return, right. right? That just verifies that your pay stubs, so you get a raise, your pay stubs don't generate what you made last two years. Mm -hmm. Or if you get bonuses or overtime or any of that, it's not recorded. Um, they want to know an average. They want to, they want a long standing. Okay, you're going to pay for this 30 years. Okay, we only asked for two years of what happened, not 30 years backwards. They, they just want proof that you're going to do, you're going to be able to pay back that mortgage. Inconsistency. So yes. they want to make sure that your income has, has remained the same or improved or that it's not drastically different. Um, even, even that your job type has stayed the same. So it's not necessarily always, don't quote me on this. I mean, like, I'm sure a lender could be like, Kendra, shut up. I found in my own experience um, that it wasn't just that, so I had changed jobs before I got my house loan. So I'd been in real estate for a long time um, as, as an agent. So I was commissioned. So that meant I was self-employed. And then I tried to teach for a couple of years. Oh my, yes, that's Jordan's, Jordan and Branson's wife is a new teacher. She's gonna kill it and she's gonna be amazing. Hey, has she um, got over the first year teacher tired yet? <laughs> it's not She's gonna happen when you get home oh wait you was asleep when she got home last yeah. night <laughs> yeah for reals man teaching is a tough gig i'm not cut out for it not cut out for it like don't get me wrong i love i love the people like i mean that's kind of a no-brainer and i think middle school humor is the best humor in the world like nothing gets me giggling like a middle school kid even on vacations i'm like i hear middle school humor like hashtag MSQOTD because middle school quotes of the day are the best, but for reals, not for me. So I did that. And then I came back to real estate um, and, and had a salaried position working for you. And so even though out of five years, I went from self-employed to two years of um, a salary position as a teacher. And then a year, actually, that was just a few months whenever I had applied for that loan, probably mm -hmm. six, eight months, not mm -hmm. even a whole year, right? I don't think so. And that was as a salaried position for you. So sometimes just consistency 
um, and being in the similar field. So having been able to show I was in real estate, came back to real estate, that made a huge difference. But those last two to three years of your tax forms are super important. Yep. So and we had to sign forms that you said we weren't, I wasn't going to fire you for 90 days. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. That's Susie. nice. <laughs> okay. I'm glad that worked out. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. I, I actually, so your I employer, didn't know that, that happened. So your so. employer will also get forms to verify things. Like, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, I knew that you had to verify that I worked for you. That's what it is. It's an employee verification. Right. Um, and so because owner wants to make sure that you're still employed, if you're not, obviously you're a huge risk and they're not going to be able to yeah, loan on you. That'd be an upsetting way to find out. You don't have a job <laughs> next week. <laughs> Can you nope. not say it quite like that? <laughs> if I want to remind you, please, I do okay. want to remind you that okay. um, I was the one at the office today. That was yes. me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I had to leave and go get cookies. Oh, my Lanta. Can we talk about cookies? <laughs> Like no. Brian's not usually the junk food junkie of the office. Oh, jeez. Yesterday I walk into his office. He's got this huge Walgreens sack in his floor. I don't know what was in it. I saw mm. two two or three cans of Pringles. <laughs> yes. Today I walk into his office. He's got this whole bag of cookies. Like Value Mart down on 2nd Street was giving them away today. And I was like, man, so I'm starving. So it looked to me like he'd already eaten half cookies. of the bag of the bag of cookies. Because it was Maybe. like the individual. It was like yes. a bag of bag of. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yep. yeah, it looked like he'd already... I might have. So I just walked in and busted out laughing. He didn't even say, do you want cookies? He was just like, mm. they were free. They're, yeah. <laughs> so um, are you stress eating? I That's maybe what it is. It's not me this time that's giving it's... you the stress. <laughs> <laughs> it's my mom still watching. She's yeah. like, yeah, that's not true. It is Kendra giving Man. the stress. <clears throat> Whatever. Okay, anyway, let's finish talking about this. Okay. Um, employee verification. That's important. I think sometimes people... I see that be a struggle because some employees, um, some employers are so big, mm -hmm. they don't get the document out as quickly as they need to. And it can be a real hardship for the buyer. Um, the borrower needs for their employer to hurry up and get that thing out. Some borrowers are like, why are they messing with my boss? Right. And so it's necessary. It's important. So right. I'm glad you brought that up. Like if you're moving towns. Right. You know, you got to be careful in applying for a loan if you don't want your boss to know. So... Oh, because <laughs> they they will get a notification, <laughs> and also they don't want you going to buy a house in Tennessee and you live in Woodward, you know, like how how does this job affect that? Well, it doesn't. So you have to have proof that you're going to have a future job. We had some issues with that with Carrie Ann teaching, moving mm -hmm. from Woodward to Fargo, and we had to get a contract verification of a contract signing form to refinance and and all that. Fun well, stuff. we saw that recently with another buyer. So his job is centered out of Norman or Oklahoma City area, mm -hmm. and he's living here. And so whenever he purchased his home, he had to go through some real um, stringent Verification procedures in order to traveling. say, no, yeah. really, look, this is going to be fine. And, and had to get extra information from his HR department to show to the lender to say, no, really, this is what he does. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. We're back talking about mortgage applications and things you need for your lender when you get ready to get started. So basically the quick things was the pay stubs, uh, verification of your W-2 tax reform returns. Um, information for all of your debt, your yep. credit cards, any other loans, yep. your car loan, anything like that. Now, sometimes they can pull your, so mm -hmm. uh, they'll pull your credit report and they'll give you a list and be like, hey, here's the things we have on your credit. And they should have a lot of those W, I mean, all those uh, like credit cards and, and maybe an I. Uh, one thing that popped up on ours, which I forgot about, was uh, AT&T because uh, we bought a phone uh -huh. and we're making a payment. Right. And so it pops up there that says, hey, there's a payment here. Um, I wouldn't have even thought about that, but you're absolutely yeah. right. A lot yeah. of people. Mm -hmm. And so there's some things that. in there that count for your debt to income ratio. So on your mortgage. So um, they're going to pull all that and things you're going to forget. And so they'll pull that and then they'll, you'll ask you to verify some of those things. So you're also going to need to have your last um, three to five years, maybe up to seven years of where you've lived. So if you've been renting this whole time, you'll also have to include your landlord information. I don't think that they don't necessarily. Do they call all your old landlords, or do they just call your current landlord? I think they just. I, mean, I don't know that question. they call, but there is usually a form. I think it's that to the verify the rent. So the the reason they do the last one is to verify that your rent payment. So if you're paying two hundred dollars a month rent and you go to a three thousand dollar a month payment, ouch! They call that payment shock. Yeah, no kidding. And so they want to verify like, um, can you afford a three thousand dollar payment? Why were you only paying two hundred a month? type deal and so we've seen that several times where 
they're living with family or hey living in right. grandma's house and only paying mm-hmm. or no rent and they're buying a house so they uh, they want to verify from the employer or from the homeowner whoever it is that hey what's the real rent you're paying and did it include utilities or things services like that absolutely so the other thing that i didn't understand before i started the real estate game um, was that whenever i buy my home they need to be able to see that I have reserves, that I have some cash reserves somewhere so that if I get in a bind, that I have some kind of savings. So 401k or, or um, I guess your Roth IRA or whatever would count yep. for that as well. Yep. So, all right, you had something else that you saw over there that was really interesting. So we had talked earlier about low inventory that we really need more houses to sell. And you found in your little, I don't, I don't even know what your, do you, what is this, your realtor magazine? How come I don't get those? I don't know. Are you a realtor? Yes. Did you sign that you went yours digitally? Oh, I don't know. I delete like, it every month. Yeah. I want, <laughs> I want to have it so I can write on it. All right. So you've written okay. over there. This is interesting. So it says that one of the reasons that we might be having a low inventory is because... Uh, people, like, for example, I have a customer that's got 1.99 interest for 15 years. So if he goes and buys a house today, it's going to be 3%. Right. So if he sells his $200,000 house and buys a $200,000 house... His payment just went up $183 a month. Right. So he's got to really be wanting a different house. There's right. got to be a specific reason for be, him to change. Yeah. Or his house has gone up so much in value mm-hmm. that he pulled the equity and, and do the trade. Right. But, I mean, I even, even in my last house, I had that heart, like that heart burner, like, hey, dad, what are, I'm at, I'm at 3% interest now. I'm going to buy a new house and pay three and a half. Maybe that heartburn was all those Pringles. Yes. No, it's the cookies. I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so for for reals though, what what we're already paying does make a difference in what we want to do next. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. And life changes. So yeah, back to the mortgage thing. I, I'm getting way off topic, but yeah, back to the mortgage thing. You want to make sure that you have all these documents, and we can gift you this spreadsheet that shows you everything you need. So mm-hmm. if you're like, hey, I'm going to go get a mortgage, but I don't know what lender I want to talk to yet. I really just want to make sure I have all my stuff together. Uh, I don't want to go in there and act like I you know, feel like I'm an idiot because I don't know what I'm talking about call us we'll send you the form mm-hmm. um because i mean if you call me today and ask me about insurance i'm be like heck i don't know i just called the guy and tell him to sign me up absolutely i'm like you so, just call kevin he'll take care of you yeah so same type of deal um we want it to be easy on you and non-stressful so so call us we'll we can email you this list we don't mind sitting down with you uh, just like last night i met with some customers that hadn't even been to the bank yet and we, we looked at a couple of vacant houses mm-hmm. and in that process i said hey by the way um i know you've switched jobs be ready here's what they're going to want um, and you can switch jobs in the middle of buying. Mm-hmm. They, they like it to be the same style, like a salesman, right. salesman, truck driver, truck right. driver. So if there's a lot of things that we love. I mean, that's what we do. We love people. So we want to walk you through the steps. Uh, Connie Roland at Bank 7 is a fantastic. She loves yes, it, and yes, she loves yes. people as well. And she'll make you very comfortable. Uh, we don't mind meeting you there, walking you in and introducing Absolutely. you as well. And we do that often. So um, we appreciate you guys listening, and, and uh, if you guys have questions, give us a call. My number, 580-334-2303. And I'm 580-216-0090. Have a great weekend.